a 2019 Yamaha R3 which thanks to Bike SA magazine I get to spend about an hour with. The freshly redesigned R3 that should now fit more snugly into the R family both in its looks and performance. Now this is a bike that I was genuinely excited when I heard that I could spend an hour with it. It's a bike that I've really wanted to have a go on since they were first launched. Unfortunately I missed the first generation but I'm just in time to experience the second. When they first came out they filled a really important gap in the market in the displacement area. They're not too fast to learn on but not so slow that you'll get bored of them within a few months. Even as a track bike I think the 300 class is currently the best choice. They're cheaper than a 600 for example. They're cheaper to repair if you were to drop it. The power they can put out is manageable but not intimidating and they will go through a lot fewer tires than a bigger bike as well. But to make the most of the time that I have with the R3, I decided to make this video around answering your questions about it. So I did what any social media addict would do and put out an Instagram Q&A asking what you guys would like to know about it. But that was already 5 minutes gone. I then realized 2 minutes later that it would probably take more than an hour to get enough decent questions in to answer. And by then the bike would be gone. But thankfully I had my phone. Which in the notes app I have a note where I store all the questions I've ever had about the Yamaha R3. So I could just turn to that in my time of need. So let's do some rapid fire questions from my notes app. No. It's actually a 320. Because the motorcycle world makes no sense. No, it's blue you idiot. If you want something green, ask Kawasaki. Oh, now I see what you mean. Yes, it's very environmentally friendly. In fact, it uses only slightly more fuel than an electric motorcycle and has that unique feature that makes motorcycles so attractive, a combustion engine. No, but it's probably meant to and definitely does look like the dash from the R1. However, this isn't a TFT display and is just an LCD. But that's exactly what you need on a bike like this and I appreciate their effort to keep it looking as similar to the R1 as possible. I would think it's to make it easier to hook out when it's tucked into the bike but it looks ridiculous, it's easy to trip over and the people that buy this bike know how a kickstand works. They don't need a 3 foot pole to find it. Yes, however only the small one, not the big Red Bull. But I guess that's better than no Red Bull at all. I guess the youths will have to become more sophisticated and start drinking a non-portable beverage like coffee to get their caffeine fix. Probably not. But a 300 needs every advantage it can get. So if Ram Air is the answer to an extra horsepower, then it's worth it. Plus it looks awesome. Which unfortunately makes it even more upsetting that this Ram Air intake is 100% just for aesthetics. I can poke my fingers through the back of it, which might suggest that it doesn't send any air to the airbox. Really? That's a ridiculous question. It obviously uses the intake on land and its gills when it's underwater. Honestly, why do I even answer these questions? I 
I really don't know, but I have the same problem. No matter how many bikes you've ridden, or how high up the displacement food chain you go, this little bike just seems to tickle your motorcycle funny bone. Rather dramatic, I know. It definitely doesn't look so bad when twisting it. However, when riding, it feels like your arm can barely rotate enough to reach the stop. A sporty bike like this needs a quick action throttle, not this. took a lot less time than I was expecting. We still have about five minutes left with the R3, which actually works out perfect because now I have time to remind you that the August issue of Bike SA is out now, which has my very first column inside it. So if you are interested, pick one up, or if you can't, I will link the digital copy down in the description below. Is it just me or does it kind of look like it says R1 here? There's an R, and there's like a line. But it's not an R1, it's an R3. I get the design, but it just didn't work. But anyway, that is pretty much all the time that we get to spend with the R3 today, unfortunately. I have no doubt that your questions would have been exactly the same as my questions, maybe just worded a little bit differently. But if a review is what you were after, keep an eye out on the next few issues of Bike SA magazine. And I should probably start talking a little bit faster because I have to get this bike back in about three minutes and I don't think that I'm going to make it.